YouTube, it's part three of the build. Phoenix V2. Two meter sailplane by Volantix RC. Available at Banggood. Check the links in the description below. Get your very own today. We have some coupon codes. If I didn't mention that, there's coupon codes down there as well. So check it out. We're going to be using this Redcon CM703 today. And I want to apologize to you guys. I forgot something in part two, the assembly part. And that would typically be considered part of the assembly. And I think we were in a hurry just to get things done before we ran out of time. And I never did actually put the control arms, the control horns, onto the wings. It is so hard to flip these things in here now. But we're going to do that now. And it may be a little bit easier since the plane is pseudo-assembled. Okay, so these are the control arms. And then, of course, we have to do the control horns on the servos. So we're just going to dump these out. And I'll show you the trick of the day. It's nothing special, but it's a drill with a screwdriver. Make sure it fits. Because these, these screws are like my least favorite part of this job. So there is a little bump, and then there is a flat. Some would say it goes this way, which would be incorrect, even though you can make it look pretty sharp if you do that. So, this is gonna go like that. It does not go like this. Uh. It goes like this. Uh. Okay, these are all the same. They're huge. Why are they so big? What the heck? That is so weird. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to run the screws from here through and out the other side. And it's a very straightforward process. And the whole idea is if you use a screwdriver, it is actually quite a bit easier. And when I say a screwdriver, I mean a drill. Because then you can knock this out fairly quick. You guys know that I will occasionally pause the video. I'm not trying to pretend to be like 100% live on this channel. Um, that's not necessarily what I'm going for. But this is tediously boring to watch. So I may actually skip some of it. But I'll just show you my process because, you know, half the battle in building these things is just the little tricks that you run into. And I know some of you guys like exactly how to drop these screws as many times as possible. And preferably you want to work directly under the lowest point in your room. So I'm actually going to move this a little bit. So anyway, that's what our plan is today. Work underneath the other Phoenix 2.6 meter and hit our heads on it as many times as possible. And we're going to get this thing built, and it's going to be awesome. So I'm just going to switch gears and start them, and then I'll use the drill to finish them off. Okay? So it's pretty simple. The other trick, trick of the day, get yourself a magnet. Screw a stick to the magnet. Stick that to something else if you've got, you know, like a metal workbench or whatever. Get these suckers started. Now the drill will clearly over torque these if you're not careful you need to be careful because you can squish and compress this foam without too much effort at all okay and you want them to be square and while that doesn't seem like a very big deal I can tell you hundreds of other occasions where I didn't use a drill and it just takes forever. Okay. So there you have it. Now, if you take and sight down the length of there. Do, 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 do. Just like that. Works good. All right, I'm going to pause it while I get the surface here, here, here. And then, uh, well, actually, we can do those two first. We'll get those started. In case I think of anything especially fancy trick-wise. Obviously one's going to go to here and one's going to go to there. Okay, so one's here, one's there. So the way you can tell is because that's where the servo sticks out. Okay. A lot of this stuff is probably covered in the manual. 
I'm not even going to bother to check because why would I read a manual? You know, that's what you've got me for. Notice there's a big hole here. That might come in handy later if we end up putting some lights in. Boy, that one just didn't want to start, did it? I'll give it some encouragement. Yeah, baby. So we need three more. So I grab four. That's the other thing too. If you're really not careful, it'll pick up your screwdriver. So basically my objective here today is to get this thing assembled. And if we happen to catch some decent weather this weekend, it is Thanksgiving tomorrow. And I'm going to be giving thanks for such an awesome audience. Not joking, guys. Dead serious. We're really fortunate to have such a great audience that will watch me use a screwdriver to put Chinese screws through Chinese planes. It takes a special type of person to watch somebody do these things. And you're that person. So thank you for being that person. Thanks for coming back time and time again to watch me do many of the same things. Of course, I enjoy doing them, and you probably do too. Maybe you just get a kick out of watching somebody else do the thing that you should be doing while you sit there. I, I do. <laughs> I watch YouTube all the time. I watch people doing things that I should be doing. And instead I'm watching YouTube. Okay, cool. So we got those tight. Good purchase. One thing I'm not crazy about on this design. There's a loud to be play here and that could be avoided but it would have required having the servo in a more ugly place so I'm okay with it I forgive you Volantex okay so now this one and like I said we're just gonna do the three that are different from the others and then the rest you could imagine what it'd be like if I filmed it and I'll just do it real quick off film and come right back to you so I'm not wasting your time and uh, you know what else I'm gonna do I'm gonna just extend my table oh yeah perfect that will give me a little bit more room these planes, they seem to get bigger and bigger and more and more obnoxious no matter what I do. Um, that's one thing that somebody told me once. One of my neighbors, their vast wisdom has come true. They said, Brian, small planes lead to big planes. And I'm like, whatever, that's impossible. Well, they were exactly correct. Small planes do lead to big planes, but that doesn't mean the small planes stop coming. Small planes lead to big planes, and big planes... Big planes lead back to small planes, which lead to big planes. And then that leads to even bigger planes, which leads to real planes. Just don't tell my wife about that one. You'll notice she's not filming. Where is she? Okay, she's not here. We're good. Yeah, the real planes thing, that'll be a, that'll be a fun one. It's coming someday. You kids just watch. Just watch. Oh, come on. Why is it not biting? It's like it doesn't want to make it through this. Sometimes these control surfaces are just a little bit too tall. And I wonder if that's what's happening here. Nope, just didn't have good penetration. You got to align before you can penetrate. Tricks of the trade, guys. Line up with the hole. Stick it in there. Son of a gun, drop your screw on the floor. Okay, we're going to go back to the trusty. Once we get these in here, guys, we're going to pause it. I'll get the rest of them done. We'll come back. We'll put the control arms onto the servos. But at the same time, the reason we ended up doing this was because uh, we were in the process of getting ready to set up the radio. And I know for a lot of you guys at home, the radio setup is, is maybe one of the areas where you're struggling to learn on your own or with the help from your you know your local club or your radio controlled hobby shop a lot of times you get in there you expect to get answers and instead you leave with more questions or extreme frustration and I, I want to tell you guys local hobby shops that are worth their that are that are good they're great, and you really ought to be supporting them. Go ahead and buy stuff from my links. Don't get me wrong. I want to try to perpetuate the channel as much as possible, but I want the hobby shops to be in business. But I'll be first to admit, 
I got hobby shops here in town. One of them's really good. One of them is maybe not as good. But the thing is, they're both good shops. They just, they don't meet my needs. So it's like, sorry, I'm going to buy stuff where I can afford to buy it. I'm going to buy it on my schedule with the money that I do or do not have. I'm going to make decisions. Not based on whatever stupid money back scheme you've got running this month. Which, by the way, Hobby Town, why do you let these, you give like a $5 credit per $100. I don't get this, right? And then you let it fall off after a month or something like that. It's ridiculous. If I'm stupid enough to spend four or five hundred bucks, let me keep that credit. Give me a year or something like that. All right, guys, I'm gonna do these. I'll come right back. All right, folks, so we're back. We got all the control horns on, control arms. So now we need to put these things on. So we're gonna dump those out of the bag. And the first thing I'm noticing is that there's a hole enlarged at the third hole in from the end. I'm not sure exactly why they chose to do that. Obviously there's two long ones and four short ones. Okay. So it's pretty clear what that's for. Me one per control surface here. So we'll just drop those off here and here. And then one per control surface here. And it's pretty evident which one goes to which. Okay? So it's going to go like this actually. So now what I need to do is just look at the manual for a second. This is where. Okay, install the. Yeah, they don't really show that, which hole to put them in. I'm going to see if there's a diagram that shows that. If there's not, then I know what I'm going to do. They don't tell you. They don't tell you. So, if they don't tell you, then I'm going to make up my own mind. It's going to be quite simple. And usually what I do is the maximum deflection... I'm not going to put any of the screws in at all because we don't know how these are going to center up. <clears throat> you know what? I said I was going to do this bone stock. I guess I'm going to do it stock. That's what I'll do. And then I'm going to go to the innermost hole. Okay? So we're going to take one of these little rubbers. We're going to slip it over from this end to avoid stretching it all out like crazy. Just putting it in the hole, the one that the factory enlarged. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and just uh, pop that in there. And we're just going to keep it all loose. And we're going to repeat that process for each and every one of these controls. We'll leave these screws in one place so we can find them easy. You know, all you got to do is just put this through, give it a half twist, and you're golden. You just find the half, halfway up position, and of course that's going to be dictated for us when we hook up our. We hook up our receiver, and we don't actually want it to be permanently uh, fixed yet because we're probably going to have to adjust the end plays a little bit. Okay, so we have four more of these. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Okay. So we'll just drop these down here. One, two, three. And didn't get the fourth one. Four. Same exact scenario. Just making sure they're all the same size. Looks like they are. These ones can be just a little bit trickier. Because they're in that pocket, of course, you have this little slit here cut so you can get a screwdriver down there. Put the screw in when you're done. And we're going to have to get at these a few times to get it right. So we'll go ahead and just uh, go ahead and slip our rubber keeper on there. And we'll just do this process for all four of these. 
with the understanding that we're probably going to have to adjust. Whatever we do, and that's fine. Um, doesn't look like these are going to be adjusted for one particular position or another. So we'll probably have to rough, rough adjust this a little bit. So I find it's easier to support this like that. And then when you twist it, you won't have the propensity to want to break here or break here at this little bend. This, this little bend in the plastic can be weak. Okay. So I'm going to get these four on and I'll come right back. All right, folks. I wanted to talk to you about something here. I was saying I was going to try to get these in here, and I'm noticing a problem. I'm going to talk to you about it for a second. Okay, so I'm in the hole, the lowest hole, which means you'll get the most control output. And I'm in the middle hole where they had pre-drilled to widen. And I stick this on here square. I don't know if you guys can tell what's going on there. I'm going to grab a screwdriver so I can point. Okay, look at this. This metal rod is a little bit too long. I see this quite a bit when you get into the cheaper, uh, cheaper airplanes and you're also out of threading so hopefully we don't need to go any further in but we for sure need to clip a little bit of this off and we're gonna have to do that on all these units which is a pain in the butt however given the circumstances of this transaction I think we're okay so there's two ways to do it one you can completely take this off which will take forever because you have to literally unscrew every single one of them or option two the easier option is to put them most of the way in and then get a pair of snips that you can tolerate having some damage to okay and when I say that I say it because when you cut this it's gonna damage your your cutters okay so you get in here you see what's gonna happen it's gonna put a little ding in there so what you'll have to do is you'll have to try to go for a little bit more power and you see what's gonna happen if I do that is I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna end up breaking these things trying to do this okay so you just it's kind of a pain but you're basically gonna to have to take this sucker off which is really annoying but you know what if annoyance was a disqualifier for me to purchase an RC I wouldn't have ever bought any planes so the other thing is you can chuck this into your drill if you have a really long one Keep in mind, you do have to get that thing back on there later, and that can be a little bit challenging if you make a really nasty cut. So you'll want to be careful. And do yourself a favor if you don't have safety glasses on. Put safety glasses on. Okay, so you're just going to come in here, and then just, just like that. And there you go. There you have it, guys. Now it can go back on. Like I said, if you make a clean enough cut, it won't be an issue and so what I'll do is I'll walk over to the plane we'll give you guys a quick look at how that's gonna work now because obviously we're still gonna go in the same distance the difference is that bolt won't be shooting through uh, causing all sorts of aggregate uh, aggravation for us okay so we're just gonna run this back in by hand I use the rubber for traction on the plastic it works really good for that okay so I get it all the way basically bottomed out Slip this on to the servo square. Like I said, we don't know where center is yet, but we know that it's close to that position. And I'm gonna slip it into the bottom hole. And as you can see, we are not, we're not even totally level yet, but we're not also perfectly straight up and down either. Okay, that's pretty close, and this is pretty close. That'd be good enough to start with, you know, you're not gonna, you can get off straight edge and waste as much time as you guys want on your own plane, but I can tell you right now it's not going to make a bit of difference uh, unless you're dealing with some sort of high performance jet that's moving really quick. Okay, so that's our good starting point. We're going to do that exact same thing so that all four of them on the wing look like this so we have adjustment in and out. And then we'll come right back and we'll talk some more. Okay, so guys, I got two of them done. They look nice. We got a nice gap, but I feel like I felt like I was cheating you by not sharing this part, okay? So I told you, you chuck this in to your drill, okay? So you just chuck it in, because it takes forever to unscrew these otherwise. And then you just back it out like that. And then you can take and shorten off, I don't know, like three or four turns. 
And then you can take this drill while you've got it like this. You can feed on the rubber. Then you can stick this on, get it started, slow but steady, and then hold it and pull the trigger. And it's a lot quicker. It's not like you have to do that, obviously. But as you can see, it's a lot faster. And there are moments in time when time is money. And in this case, time is definitely not money because it's YouTube. So, uh... I think it's the converse on YouTube. The more time I spend, the less money I earn. That's just a hilarious joke, guys, for anybody who has a YouTube channel. Okay, so then this needs to be screwed in all the way until I feel resistance and put it in the bottom hole. And as you can see, we're still not quite right. We're still down quite a bit. We want that to be flush, flush here. So I'm gonna pop this off the end of the servo get it somewhat close to flush and these plastic gears don't really like to jive up well I knew there'd be a kind of the El Cheapo-ness coming out at some point and I think we're kind of getting to the point now where we're starting to see some of those things surface and to be honest with you I mean you see this on I don't know all sorts of different makes and models but these things just don't want to jive very well, and I don't know what the heck is going on. It seemed like the other ones went nice and smooth. So let's see if I can get this lined up. Yeah. It's just wanting to go on further forward. Every once in a while, they'll stick the wrong control arm in there, so don't get too control horn. Don't get too super aggressive. You may just break it off. I say that as I'm using pliers to install it. What the heck is going on here? It's like it doesn't want to go at all. Let's see if this one goes. Yeah, that one went okay. I'm just going to switch them. I don't know. Maybe there's just a tooth that's a little bent on there or something. Yeah, it's on. It's just... See where it is? It's all the way over here. And I need it to be like square. And I know some of you noobs are probably thinking, well just center it on your transmitter. Well of course you can you can center it on your transmitter, but then you're not gonna have any trim left. <sighs> okay, well that's annoying. We'll probably just have to because we only have so much mechanical adjustment, you see folks. So I can only put this in so much further before we run out of threads that are even purchasing this, okay? So that's about all I can get right there, and that's gonna be susceptible to wanting to pull out now. So I'm going to put it in like this, and then hope for the best. And just push it on there, okay? Obviously we'll have to address that here in a little bit. Actually, we're gonna address it right now because it's starting to tick me off. Yeah, we gotta go out a couple more turns. One, two. I think we'll be about where we need to be. Okay, so we're not quite flush. Maybe do another half turn out. Maybe one. Okay, got it. Okay, so now that's on there. I'm gonna take the screwdriver and just kind of press in there. Really get that thing stuck on there. And you can tell from the side if there's a big gap here. And that gap that gap is where you can tell if you've got a decent purchase on that okay so this one here we have to do the same thing we did with the other one so we're just gonna chuck in chuck it in screw it out grab the tool clip the end done deal take the drill switch the direction Whoa. uncheck it put this on the end and about the time you're done, that's when you'll be getting the hang of it. Okay, slip that in, give it a twist. And obviously your flaps, they're going to be positionally a little bit different than the ailerons. So I don't know, maybe you won't absolutely have to do the little cut the tip off trick. Okay, another half. 
another half, another half, yeah, still another half, mm, that might be it, nope, another half, nope, jeez, another half, and a half, there we go, nope, still another half, are you kidding me? Yeah, so this one didn't need trimming. That's very weird. Servos are positioned the same, so we're smooth here. We'd be smooth here. We're smooth here. Okay, so good deal. I didn't snap these on any of them because we're not permanent on them where we're putting everything. So these things worked good for cutting it, and they will keep sharp here, okay? So you don't have to worry about killing the, the tip on those more robust tools. I mean, yeah, you don't want to let your dad see you doing it to his, but if they belong to you, you can ruin them. Okay? Alright, so now the radio turns on. We already set this up in a previous video just with our basic setup with our throttle cut, which is on. Go over to monitor. Make sure it's working. It is. Okay, back to regular. Clear the timer so we don't have that annoyance. And then we need to start getting this, uh, transmitter put in so we can do that and that will give us the ability to do some radio setup beyond what we've already done and it will also give us the ability to center those servos okay so we got a bind plug in there I gotta get out of there too um, so the bind plug basically goes into the bind port and that allows us to bind this to our radio system looks like the bind is on the bottom the bind shorts the um, Where is that mark on there? It binds the, or it marks minus, it takes signal and holds it to negative, okay? So then this is where our satellite's gonna plug in up top. And uh, just looking at this, it does not really clearly mark which side's which. That's always convenient. And it's keyed, but we don't have a key on this thing. So, yeah, that's real helpful. So I guess we'll just see if it goes one way versus the other. We'll see if it blows up. I'm going to actually unplug this for now. And we're going to flip the plane right side up. And instead of flipping it lengthwise, we'll do it this way. So we can hopefully not damage everything. Pop the canopy off. Okay, canopy's out of the way. Okay, so we got a bunch of wires here. Really don't care which one's which, except for the ESC, the electronic speed control, which is right here, okay? Because that's what's going to get us some juice to this. There's a BEC, a battery elimination circuit, or a battery eliminator circuit, whichever you prefer. Throttle is here. And I'm looking for markings, and I do not see where it says signal anywhere on there, so I don't know which one's which. So we're just going to do the good old guess and check method. Throttle is the first pin set. We'll plug it in just a little bit like this. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't catch on fire and blow up in a million pieces. That would kind of suck. And we're just going to put the drill out of the way. All right. Keep it in a place where you're not going to hit your throttle and all that good stuff. Make sure the prop is in a safe spot like it's not. Okay. Go ahead and plug it in. Keep your hands clear just in case all hell breaks loose. Okay, so we're clearly not hooked in right, because it didn't even wake up, okay? We're going to flip this over, plug it back into the throttle channel so it looks like our ground is on the top. Let's try. And we're still not seeing any lights. That's always convenient. So that means we're either dead, or something else is going on. Let's just real quickly test the battery. Make sure we don't have like, like a dead battery or something weird. That'd be very weird. Nope, it's not dead. Three cells. All is at 12.5. That's good enough for me. 4.18, 4.14, and 4.22. Okay. So this is plenty good to run that. It should be working. Maybe I have to have the satellite plugged in in order for it to properly work. Or maybe I need to go into bind mode first. So we're going to plug in the bind plug. Okay. Sticks in their neutral position.
because if there is a fail safe, we want it to fail safe to that condition. And here goes nothing. Oh, radio's off. RF is off. Okay, now it's in bind mode. Okay, so evidently the signal is up. Hold down the bind plug. Flip it on. So it's binding. DSM 22, DSMX 22 milliseconds. We are bound. Okay, so the only thing that's hooked up is throttle. Throttle cut is on. Nothing's taken off. I'm going to take out the bind switch or bind plug. I'm going to power this down. Now I'm going to get lucky or I'm not going to get lucky. So we're just going to check. It looks like this is probably signal. So we'll just try that first. We'll see if it wakes up when we plug this in. Radio is off. I always power cycle them. It's a stupid trick because obviously they're not aware of their power condition like that. But okay, so it's on. We got a fresh. Okay, so this is on. I don't see any. Throttle's freaking out. That's good. Okay, a satellite's either working or not working. Okay, and I have no freaking clue if this is working or not. So I'm going to go ahead and power it down. And we're going to do the bind process again. Throttle's off. Throttle cuts on. Okay, we're going to go bind plug in. The good news is with most of the stuff you're dealing with 3 volts or 5 volts so it's not going to hopefully damage itself. Okay, so with both plugged in together, powered up, we have flashy lights, we have flashy lights. Now I'm going to do the same thing while holding the bind plug or bind switch on my DX18. I'm going to turn it on while continuing to hold. You'll see the rapid flash stop and then go to a slow flash, DSMX 22 milliseconds. Okay, now we let go. Everything is bound. Okay, let's go ahead and power down. And you can see this. Look, we got a light. Means we figured it out. So it looks like gray goes to the antenna side, and then signal goes up. Unplugged the bind plug. Unplug the battery. Let's go ahead and plug in some of this stuff and just get it going. So obviously two wires that go back to the far end for rudder and elevator and then these two go in for the ailerons. It says channel 4 and channel 3. And then this, oh this is actually a Y splitter so we could just go into the ailerons. Uh, treat that as the ailerons. So we'll just go rudder, auxiliary one I guess. Auxiliary. We're, we're not going to set it up this way by the way. We're just doing this to get things, uh, get established what's what. Okay, rudder. And we've got, of course, that throttle cable is super short because that's stupid ferrite core. Okay, and then we'll go into the elevator for this one. Oh, guys, look, there's ailerons. Okay, so we'll we'll just put ailerons in here, and then we'll go ahead and grab throttle, and we'll plug it in here. Okay. So this isn't going to be properly set up, it's just going to get us something to test the control surfaces. Everything's powered up. We have radio contact. It's initiating the ESC. Hasn't started running. Elevator is hooked to the rudder. And the elevator is hooked to that. And then the ailerons don't seem to be doing anything because they're not plugged in yet. That's correct because I never plugged them in back here on the end of the Y cable. So what we can learn from this is that you need to unplug that, unplug throttle. Now this is kind of a good time if you're into making labels and things like this, you could make labels. I think I'm just going to opt to try to mark them with a marker, if I can get it to mark. So what we have is whatever the rudder is, is actually the elevator, so that's labeled as rudder. So this is going to be elevator. So let's do like an E for elevator. Boy, this marker sucks. And this is going to be rudder. You know what? I'm going to bail on my plan to label those because that's a waste of time. 
Believe it or not, the home position may change slightly when I do this. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but just take my word for it. It probably will. Okay, so now we'll just lay that out. Make sure the radio's on. Clear the timer. Plug it in. Wait for things to come alive. Oh, of course, we got to plug in the <clears throat> the power. That that's just annoying me there. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, I might just an, uh, un annoy myself here for a minute and take that right out because that's just driving me crazy already. Might be kind of nice later, but I think for now. So I'm actually just going to walk this over very carefully. Just kind of push that through that area there so I can pull that down gently so I don't rip the cable because it is easy to rip the cables on these servo leads. Okay, got it through. Now I can reach it out. So much easier. And as you can see, that'll go into the first port. Okay, now, power it on. Let the magic happen. Okay, so as you can see, the elevator's way out of whack. Rudder's way out of, well, rudder's maybe not so bad. See? The elevator's way out of whack, though. So we gotta do a mechanical adjustment on that. And the easiest way to do that is to literally unplug, or just pull this off, off the servo. Oh, that was a rudder, whoopsiekins. So this was the elevator. Okay, run that so that it's centered by just grabbing it, and you can kind of roughly center it. Stick it back on. Up, down, left, right. Okay, so that's backward. So servo setup, reverse rudder. Now it's going the right way, so moves the plane. Okay, and this needs to be centered as well. Okay, so we'll just kind of, same, same scenario. Got it fairly close. Yaw, 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 okay. Up, down, up, down, okay. Ailerons would work, except they're not plugged in. So let's fix that problem right now. As you can see, we've got this little strobe light telling us that something's happening. Hopefully it doesn't mean you're hooked up wrong. You're hooked up wrong. It's possible though. Okay, so now the other thing I want to do real quick is I'm just going to go ahead and plop this battery in here just loose. I want to make sure the motor's running and stuff. So we'll just do this all, just really temporarily stick this in here. Just make sure we don't lose a finger trying to juggle one of the pieces of equipment here. Okay. So I'm just going to hold this, make sure I don't run into anything with my wings, or mitigate what I run into at least. So we'll just hang this out over the end of the table, throttle cuts off. Just check them for clearance. Throttle cut. Okay, so we're good there. We have air blowing, so we don't have to switch any of the leads on the motor. If your motor's going backward, just take any two of those three wires that come out of the electronic speed control to the motor and flip them. It doesn't matter what color they are. Trust me, guys, it won't matter. All right, uh, I see how this one's down a little bit. We're not hooked up yet, so we don't even care. And I just gotta be careful not to drop all this crap out of here. So this is where it gets a little bit frustrating when you're working on some of these planes because you got access from one side and then you have to get in from both sides to kind of do what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop off the wings entirely. Or at least enough that I can see what's going on through the, the holes. Okay. This is a lot more awkward than it seems when you're flipping this plane over in here. It's like construction zone all the time. 
Okay, so we got two wires coming back here. Those two wires are just a, a Y cable that's been split back here, okay? So that's not going to be the way we do it because we want to do flap rounds. Um, so I need to establish that's this cable. Or do I have two going back there? It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like just a two. So if we wanted to, we could... I definitely want to do flap rounds, okay? But I don't really mind the flaps being shared on a channel, so we'll just actually go ahead and use that as the flaps. So let's call that... We'll put it on the gear channel. doesn't really matter in this application. Okay, so then those wires are going to be a real bear cut to get out of there though. Okay, so I'm going to grab whatever it is. I'm going to pull it through so we can get to it easily for our testing purposes. And uh, to be honest, we could establish centering with either one of these. Okay, so one of them just moved a lot. Okay, so right now gear is set up as gear so why don't we just see which channel is going to be for our flaps probably auxiliary one might be a little easier I don't have an assignment yet we we'll go to flap system we'll inhibit it I'm going to move it to switch B I want to just unplug this so I don't damage the servo so we'll set one of them to We'll do minus 100 and then plus 100 for the full deployment. See, it's moving right aileron right now. Oops, go the other way for this. Now remember, this is a flap around configuration. So if you depend on your flap mode, see how it moves the ailerons, both of them? But then when you move the flaps, it moves them the, the same direction, okay? Um, so in this case I have to add a mix, I want to set this to like a one second deployment speed, mixing, normal, so we're hooked up, why don't we use, let's use auxiliary too. So I want to go to flap and go to auxiliary two. And we'll just, we'll just test by doing this. Okay, so there's auxiliary two moving. It's moving with uh, that setting. And then we're gonna do, okay, so we want it to also act on the bottom side too. So you see how it's moving over as I do this? So we're going to go to 100 up and 100 down. Now watch. Now it's just going to mimic the ailerons. Okay? But it's going to run out of room because it has a evident offset. This is where you can center that back over to zero. See how this is going down as I do that? This should be 100 when we're done. Okay, so we're at 100. So now... Basically, it's going to mimic one of the two ailerons. We don't know which one we need uh, needed to copy yet, but it'll be, be one of the two is fine. And we'll ex I'll explain that a lot more in depth later. But for now, just take my word for it. I'm going to grab this wire, pull it through a little bit. And then we can go ahead and plug in the flaps. I honestly assume that the longer cable is going to be our flap because it happens to be... closer in proximity. So we'll go to auxiliary two. Whoa, see that? We were incorrect. Okay, so auxiliary two, we're, we weren't incorrect, we just picked, evidently they used a long cable on that one. So this will be our inboard flap, okay? Inboard flap, inboard flap. Ooh, going the wrong way. So I got to reverse Servo, travel, reverse, auxiliary two. Ooh. 
Oh, I don't like that at all. I just must have them in a different position mechanically, or I just have a little bit more resistance on one. See how this one's running out of... I think it's just running out of play is what's going on. So I'm going to flip this over and figure that out real quick. See, so guys, this stuff is not... It's not like extremely easy but it's also not like really hard either okay so I need to do something else watch this we're gonna go to mixing we're gonna go like this and we're gonna make it go the other direction Okay, and I want to clear the offset. And I think what's going on here, guys, is we're just literally running out of play. So that's our center position right now. So we want to just physically hold this in position and then go ahead and put that where it needs to be, which is slightly up. We can mechanically adjust that too. And then we want to physically put this where it belongs as well. Okay, which again is slightly mechanically up. Now when we deploy flaps, they go down, and then down a little bit more, okay? Now I'm not saying this is the end game, but at least we have the correct direction being employed. Now the other thing is you can see it's immediately, it's already hitting, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do ourselves a favor and cut that out. So I'm just gonna cut kind of like a triangle. And then this triangle or teardrop shape or whatever it is, just so it looks kind of decent. You don't want it to look totally slobby. Okay. Now we can peel that out. And then when you deploy your flaps, you won't bottom out. Okay, so we'll just do that on both sides here. That's a lot more painful when you're working with like a super super high quality plane that you've just spent months on now there's something I don't have quite right because we're bottomed out you see how it says minus 150 so I'm gonna set my offset I'm gonna go negative nope I'm gonna go positive again to bring it back if it's gonna do it for me nope it's not surprising see now it's coming back into the range so I want the neutral setting to be 100. Well, that's good enough. It says 102. Now watch. Now they move the whole range. In fact, they're bottoming out, both of them. That's exactly what we want. We want to use up the whole throw on the servo. Now we could run them. We could overdrive the servos and go past 100 on both ends of the spectrum. But that gets to where you're really wearing out the... The servos can run into their own internal end stops because they're too stupid to know any better. And you will sometimes wear them out. It just depends on the servo. These ones are not usually the highest quality, so I don't want to push I don't want to push the issue, you know. Looks pretty good. Now it just becomes a mechanical thing where we can we can go ahead and tweak these back probably one. I don't know, one little bit. Now you could use these as spoilers as well if you wanted, but I'm not going to use inboard spoilers on this plane. Um, on real cell planes, people will use the inboard spoilers to increase speed, usually along with the outboard, uh, the ailerons. And these, these are inboard, and then those are outboard, because they're out from the middle. Okay, flaps, flaps, cool. And of course we'll have ailerons, but we don't have those wired up yet, so it's not going to do anything when we move those. So what I'll do is I'll just cheat a wire over to show you what that's going to look like here in a minute. So we'll go to aileron. Now you could go and wire these together, and that would be perfectly fine, but you would want to change your configuration, your settings. Okay, so this is going to move both ailerons right now uh, when I get these both plugged in. From just the one signal see it popped it right off and it's trying to pull it right into the 
it's trying to pull it into there so I need to probably go ahead and pop that control horn out I don't want to damage the servo by having it overdrive into a obstruction like that okay okay so we're plugged in now I'm just gonna move this and we're bottoming out here meaning yeah so we're at 150 percent of output there so that puts us to the middle so if that's the middle setting then I want to go ahead and center this at the middle I know this is a little bit confusing for some of you new guys but trust me it's going somewhere okay so that's centered so now they're both allowed to move and what I'm talking about is right there it says zero on the right aileron on the left aileron it says zero and then it moves when I move the stick okay so that means we're centrally located in the pulse width modulation on that channel which is what drives the servo to a particular position okay so now when we move to the plane rolls rolls okay then we have flaps but you'll notice they all go kind of like in a wonky weird direction see how they go opposite that's because I'm hooked up to the same channel for those ailerons so really what's going to happen for practical purposes is one of these is going to get plugged into this channel and then the other one's going to get plugged into the other channel and for that we need another servo cable so I'll just grab my bag of servo cables and we'll just uh, we'll just find one and we'll we'll actually probably do two regular extension cables which will get us wired up of course it's gonna be like the the last thing I find in here it's always the last thing to find short male to female okay that's probably sufficient but we'll see so male to female and then the male to female and I don't know for sure which one I want yet we'll just go with this for now even if I have to use these together it doesn't really matter I'm just testing stuff right now and then we'll go ahead and wire it in later okay so we can uh, brown is the same as black if you're not familiar okay go ahead and plug that in help us reach down there can't quite make it so we'll just go ahead and go black to back to this one I have other lengths that will work fine okay so this one's gonna be auxiliary one I believe or gear yeah I think it's gear nope it's not gear it must be auxiliary one yep okay so now watch this guys oh yeah buddy look at that crow and then obviously I've got some settings to change to make everything work but you can see the full throw and then of course elevator and rudder okay so we have everything working now we just have some fine-tuning to get everything situated properly and I got to switch out a couple of these wires meaning like this Y cable here not super practical to use a Y cable for this application so I'm going to need to get a longer cable that will reach from here into the wing and far enough into the wing that I can pull this out a good bit and then unplug them when I'm at the field or wherever it is I'm flying so I'm going to work on finding those right now and we just established that the short ones are evidently not long enough which is a big surprise right these are extension cords with no clips I think those ones are extension cords with clips not sure I want clips on this application because this is going to be one I have to do and undo all the time you know geez these are long guys this is male to female male to female so I'm not going to explain the difference between male and female could get me in trouble here on YouTube <clears throat> that was just a hilarious joke folks okay so this year I'm going to unplug that's the aileron channel so we'll go ahead and get that Y cable out of there 
We can use that for another project now. Okay, so I always test this stuff while it's easy to work with, and then I'll plug it back through the plane, because, boy, it can be really challenging to get these things through the plane, and then to find out that they aren't even working for whatever stupid reason. Oh, you will be so pissed. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this one. And we may not need a long enough, or we may not need such a long cable, too. So this will give us the opportunity to make some good decisions without being in duress. Okay. And kind of hard to get those started, but with some effort and some time, a couple times plugging them in and out, they should be a little bit easier. Now, is that rolling correct? It's upside down, so it's kind of hard to tell, but I think it is. Yeah? Yeah, so I think we're okay. So now at this point, what we need to do is we need to figure out how to get all of our crow and flaps and all that stuff set up so that it's going to work properly. And that is a bit of a task. And I think I'm still debating about how I want to do this. I think I'm going to try to shut off my offset. See? I think I want to leave my offset off, but I just don't like the fact that the mix is causing it to go all the way down. So I guess I am going to go ahead and run it as negative. The other thing at some point I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off all these extra pieces because you don't need all this extra. Unless you're going to put that control way out at the end, which maybe I should wait until after the maiden, maiden flight just to make sure I still agree with that. Okay, so in my neutral setting, which is all the way back in this plane, that's the way it looks. So now I'm going to go back out to flap system, and I might switch these around a little bit. Whoops. Okay, so that's neutral now. I'll go the other way. So now that'll be like full hundred. And this one will be negative 100. Just to get the way I like it. Take off landing. Okay. Servo setup. Reverse. Okay. Take off flaps. Landing flaps. So you could do like a full length flap like this. Take off flaps, no flaps. But you see the spoilers are up now. So what happens is when you use a flapper on style wing, your mix gets a little bit tricky because you have to make sure that, gosh, these things are buzzing like they're digital servos. It's really annoying. So I think what I have to do is I have to go into flap system and I have to back this off some. So I'm going to go to like 50, and then I'm going to go to like 50, okay? Take off flaps, landing flaps, okay? And then we're going to go into flap system, whoops, we're going to go to mixing. See how the offset's changing the position there? Watch this. If you want more offset, go to a new one, normal. Go to auxiliary two to auxiliary two. See how it's moving? It's gonna make the movements even more excessive. Or less excessive. Okay, so there's our full deployment there. Now I want to put my, I want to give it even more offset. And that's how you can play with that. The other thing you can do is you can come in here and you can go over to flaps. 
like this. See, that's not going to do anything for us, is it? Okay, so I'm going to fiddle with this for a minute, and I'll show you how I do it. All right, folks, I got it all worked out. I have four mixes made in addition to the flap mode. Okay, so we'll start with flap mode. Under flap system, I have the system set up for position uh, zero at 25. I have it set to B, which is B, is right here. And what happens is it drops the flaps down, which are in this case flap rounds, okay? So drops them, and it's fast acting now, or normal. And then it drops them a little bit more, okay? The whole time they operate is ailerons, okay? Go in the correct direction. Up, down, yaw, yaw. That's a good little trick for you people learning to fly. Make sure it does what you think it should do and watch it do it, okay? Now, when I flip this, that's gonna put me into crow mode. See? The ailerons go up, they continue to operate as ailerons, the flaps go down, and then they go up a little bit more aggressively. This takes me out of crow. There's also that light mode. It just depends on which setting I'm in, if I want crow or not. So when I'm coming in to land, I can be flying along, I can take off flaps, get her slowed down, get it really slowed down a little bit more, kick on the crow as it gets ready to stall, cut out of it, get the extra nice um, ground effect, get out of the ground effect, drag the tail. Okay, so it'll work really nice. Okay, so how did I do that? Flap, flap system, just like this. No elevator correction yet, and speed is normal. Then in mixing, I have four mixes. The first of which is switch B, this switch that turns on flaps, not flaps, the switch, is attached to auxiliary two, which is what I happen to have switched uh, controlling my flaps, my inboard flaps. So the rate's zero, 100, and this is just guess and check until I get it right. And it's always on, okay? So when I do that, those things activate just based on the switch position, okay? And then they activate a little bit more based on the switch position, okay? The offset is to make it operate in this position as neutral and then something and then something more. Normally this is nothing. This is minus and this is plus, okay? So that makes this, instead of being minus, it makes it zero, even though it's in this position. So that's zero. 100, 200, or whatever, okay? Hope that makes some sense. And then we do the exact same thing again, except we only activate it when it's in the top position here. So the switch B adds another 100 to that setting to make it come down further, okay? So on, further, okay? Then we have one more mix that's associated to switch A, which this is switch A on a DX18 Gen 1. So the rate, again, just guess and check until I get it right, A is attached to flaps, okay? So A, now why is it attached to flaps? Because we want to control the ailerons going up. There they go up. So that negative 50 just happens to be the direction that makes it work. And you will just have to guess and check on the direction until you get it right, okay? And then just like before, we look at switch B, we say if we're in full deployment, then we want a little bit more. But if we're in partial deployment, or like the takeoff setting, we have enough. Okay, so basically crow, take off landing setting if you will, out of the crow, take off landing. And so we have a full length flap on flap configuration. We have no tie to the rudder, so when I move my ailerons the rudder does not move with it. You could tie that in if you wanted, it's super easy. Be right here, aileron rudder. It's inhibited, we're just going to turn it, we'll turn it to on and we'll add like 30%, okay? So when we roll the plane, it's gonna give us a little tail to kick us around. Roll the plane and then kicks us around. Roll the plane, kicks us around. This is a long wing, it might actually help a little bit of flight characteristics. But normally if I'm gonna get into that, what I do is I set this to switches, okay? And then when I have my full deployment, I put a little bit of rudder tie in there. And why do I do that? I actually get more aggressive with this usually. But what happens is when you put your full crow on, you're going to lose some of the output from those ailerons, okay? So then you've got a little bit of rudder to help you with your roll, okay? 
And the way you can do that is in the differential setting if you decide to do that. And you could do a multi-position setting based on switch B. Switch B, okay? And then you can do your different differential settings and you can tie that that way. I'm actually gonna turn that off because I found that it's not really helpful and it just overcomplicates things. Um, so back to mixing. So you see how we have this mix set for a switch uh, when the switch is all the way out like that. Full flaps or full crow, depending on the setting. I only really want that to be if I'm in crow, okay? So I'm actually gonna turn this back off. We'll clear that to inhibit and then I'll just add my mix here manually. Normal. And then I'm gonna scroll in um, aileron. Where the heck is aileron? There's aileron to rudder. Okay, and then we can set our rate to like 10% in the condition that switch B is in that mode. And then we can do the same exact thing, normal. We'll go to aileron. To rudder. And we'll do 35%, okay, plus and minus. And we'll turn that on for just when switch B is in the op top setting. Okay, so. Okay, guys, so. More, less, nothing. More, see, depending on what setting I'm in. Regardless of crow, and the way you get that so that you can have it so it's only active with crow is you have to go in here and make a contrary setting, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It's not probably worth doing it. But what you would do is you would set it to A, okay? So you would set A, and then you would cancel it out when the A condition is true. It's actually, you would go, you would go like this. You go aileron to rudder, and you would say negative 10, and you would say negative 10 when switch A is on, okay? So now watch this. See, it goes away. Okay. So then you would set the same thing, another aileron to rudder, and you do negative 35 and negative 35, which is our upper setting. And there are easier ways to do this. It's just the way that I've found out that works really pretty much every time. So switch A. So now watch. It's on. And then in Crow, it's it's not doing anything. Okay. Actually, that didn't work right. Because look. See, it's canceling. It's canceling the wrong direction. So I just basically would have to go in here to the. Oh, how would I do that? I forget how to do that. I think I need to go like this. So this would be plus 50. Oops, I went to the wrong one. So I would go to this one and I would go minus 10, minus 10. But I want it to be when the switch is in the other position, okay? Okay, so now when we've got crow on, it mixes. But when we have crow off, see how it's kind of backward? So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So you get the idea, guys. I'm going to play with it a little bit. And uh, you can see I have contrary rudder now. And that's because... I have these goofed up. So like I said, I'm just going to clear this because it's just complicated and I don't need the extra complication. It's going to work fine without it. And there are times when it's just keep it simple, stupid, it's the best. Because then when you go in to make an adjustment at the field, you don't have to go and reverse engineer everything. Whoops.
that's really the way you have to clear it in a DX18 Gen 1. Pretty stupid, right? Okay, so ailerons, roll, pull, okay. And then regardless of condition, crow's on. See? All right, guys, there you have it. So the Phoenix V2. Next time you see this thing, it should be getting some flight time in. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Okay, so there you have it. So the last step I've got here is uh, very self-explanatory. So I don't even know if I'm going to burden you guys with watching, but I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. And then I will do the rest of it. I'm basically going to put these set screws in. Or not the set screws. They're just screws. They're going to hold these. Um, the clevises. Or the control arms. Gosh, I can't think of what they're called all of a sudden for some reason. And the only other thing I noticed as I was kind of fiddling with that off camera is that the elevator seems to want to hit right here a little bit. So I'm probably just going to take and bend that a little bit real quick. And it's super duper easy to do this, guys. If you've never done this, it's probably a good skill to have. So I'll show you real quick. we got to clear the fuse. And so rather than try to flip this over, I'll just kind of kneel down here. I'm just going to grab it with two pairs of pliers and just give it a little bend. Okay? Now... See, now it's not hitting. Okay, and it was before. And then the elevator, the elevator doesn't have that problem because it's out further. Although, of all the control surfaces, that one seems the most spongy. Not sure why that is. All right, but you guys get the idea. That's what you get for today. That was kind of a long and tedious video. And yes, I don't even have stabilization in here yet. Maybe we'll just try it without stabilization this time and see how things go. And then uh, I'll just uh, come back and we can reinvest some more time. See if we can throw a stabilizer on top of that without losing crow. Which means we'll probably have to have one aileron act as the roll axis stabilization elevator and rudder we should be able to interrupt and operate those just fine but that'll be for another video at a later date and i think we'll use the um eagle tree i think i got an eagle tree and we'll we'll go over that or no it's an a3l that's what it is we'll use an a3l just a cheapy all right guys thanks for watching for enduring that tedious setup process it is really tedious in real life and um I guess for now, I'm probably just going to sloppily stuff that all in there. And I hope you guys aren't going to be upset with me for not showing that. So, let me just see real quick if there's a good spot to set this. Because this is not a stabilizer, so it doesn't really matter where it goes. I want this satellite to probably go way back there. And then this uh, receiver, I'll probably just zip tie it in here and put the diversity antennas... Um, ideally, you want them at about, uh, you know, 90 degrees of each other. You don't want them to be in line. You don't want them to be parallel. You want them to be perpendicular, okay? But because we have diversity and then another diversity antenna, we have a very good chance of success. So, and again, these two wires, we just have to chase them through the fuse uh, in such a manner that I can, you know, take the wings off to put this plane in the car. So, oh, and then, by the way, I don't know if you guys remember earlier, I was telling you there's a right way and a wrong way for these. Well, you can see the screws sticking up through. If you ever get annoyed by that, you can cut them off, but you have to be really careful because those things get hot and they melt the plastic. So you, you may be better off to just not screw with it um, in that way. But I don't want to tell you your business. If you want to try it on your plane, go for it. And I'm just noticing that for whatever reason, this one... I didn't tight as much, tighten as much. Not sure why that is. Uh, not a big deal. But I'm just going to go ahead and get that one squeezed in there tight like the other ones. There's nothing worse than having control surfaces that are uneven. 
well, there's a lot of things worse than that, but that's kind of annoying too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Check the description below. Like I said, I got coupon codes for this thing right now. Use it over at Banggood. Thanks, Banggood, for sending this. We'll see how the thing flies, and you guys all can make your final assessment, just like I will. Come back for more.